All right, we are in Chapter 3, Section 4, and what we're going to be talking about are unions, um, groups of people who come together to fight for workers' rights, um, especially during this Gilded Age that we've started talking about in this section of this chapter. Um, first thing is, I want you to think about this question as we go through, and this lecture is going to be a little bit different than the traditional. I want you to think about how workers in the United States government responded to the changes, the rapid changes of industrialization during the Gilded Age. First section, remember, we talked about was the inventions. Second section was the railroad. Third people were the robber barons or the philanthropists. Now we're going to talk about you and me, the average workers, the worker force of America. So during the Gilded Age from 1870 to 1900, the U.S. industrialized rapidly. New technologies led to the boom in railroads and oil and steel and electricity. Um, we talked about in the last section, especially with the, with the, the philanthropists or the um, very wealthy that came through. Trust in corporate mergers and new businesses led to monopolies. Mass immigration from the southern, uh, southern and eastern European increased the size of American cities. Uh, but the problems during the Gilded Age led to demands and changes. So instead of a regular traditional lecture, I'm going to talk to you this more as an activity. So what I want you to do is you're going to examine a series of three different primary source documents or pictures um, from the Gilded Age. Uh, for each image, I'm going to uh, pause it during this list. Um, posted lecture, but in class what we'll do is stop about it, and then I want you to each write uh, one sentence summary of the image. So if you're absent or if you're just doing this for makeup, make sure that you're um, taking these into your notes. Once all three of the images are going to be revealed, it's going to determine how the images are related. And we're going to talk about the different themes that are incorporated. So I'm just going to show you the image. Again, pause the video for a second, uh, take down some notes, write one sentence uh, summary of what you see. Here's your first image for th uh, theme one, image A. Theme one, image B. Theme one, image C. So when we looked at this, uh, theme one, the political corruption, um, when we talk about the first thing, is the Gilded Age saw a rise of political machines. They were well-organized groups that controlled a political party in a city. The, these machines offered services to voters and businesses in exchange for political votes. They were very influential with immigrants, and they helped with jobs and housing, and especially naturalization into citizenship. Theme one is also about political corruption. Machines that were led by city bosses who used a network of war bosses and precinct, precinct captains to control access to city jobs, business licenses, and courts. They arranged building projects and community services. Political machines influenced immigrant voters by creating parks near slums. They did barbecues and giveaways, Christmas presents to children, anything they can to bring in and gain support and garnish support um, for that type of machine or that type of organization. Theme one also is machine politicians were often corrupt. They used fraud to win elections. They gaffed. They used the political influence for personal gain. They took kickbacks and bribes. And the most notorious machine boss was Boss Tweed of New York's Tammany Hall, who defrauded the city for millions of dollars. Example of that was the Tweed Courthouse in New York uh, City, the county courthouse. It was supposed to cost $250,000, but by the end it cost $13 million to the taxpayers, something that shows the corruption and greed. There were also national politicians, especially under President Grant's administration, that were seen as corrupt. The Credit Mobler scandal um, it involved the attempts by the railroad companies to bribe members of the Republican Party to gain land grants for profit, meaning that they were going to get the land for free now and profit off later. Also, you had the whiskey ring. It involved whiskey distillers bribing government officials into avoiding uh, the paying of taxes. Here's a picture of the, of the uh, whole idea. The Tammany ring, the Canal ring, the whiskey ring, the Indian ring, the press ring. Everything's falling in there and people are going a little crazy. During the Gilded Ages, attempts were made to reform the government. Many government positions such as tax collectors or post office officials were appointed by patronage or a reward for poil, uh, political loyalty, meaning you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. 
So there was calls for a civil service agreement, and the government administration reform began. In 1883, the Congress passed the Pendleton Act, creating a merit-based exam for most civil, civil service jobs, meaning that it wasn't going to be just because of who you know or who you're related to that, that gives you that job. It's going to be based off of your merit or the things that you offer. So now I want you to think of the second theme. This is going to be theme number two, image A. I'm again going to give you three pictures. I'm going to pop, ask you to pause them now, and we'll have discussion after. Theme two, image B. Theme two, image C. In looking at this, we're going to be talking about the whole theme of labor unions. Industrial work was hard. It still is hard to this day. But at that point, the regulations were not there, and this is what unions were here to fight for. 12-hour work days, six days per week, low wages, no sick leave, no injury compensation. Industrial work was unskilled, dangerous, and monotonous. These bad conditions led to the growth of labor unions, groups that demanded better pay and conditions through collective bargaining. Collective bargaining is bringing everybody together and say, we're all asking for the same thing, therefore we need it from you. We're going to be reasonable and rational, but we need something for in return. In 1886, the Knights of Labor formed and helped workers, regardless of race, gender, or skill. The most successful union was the American Federation of Labor, the AFL, which was led by Samuel Gompers. It made up of only skilled workers, and they used collective bargaining and strikes to gain better pay, shorter hours, and better working conditions. It included one-third of all U.S. laborers. Some of these people turned out turned to socialism, the government's control of the business and the property and distribution of wealth. The industrial workers of the world, the IWW called the Wobblies, uh, formed in 1905, and they used socialism that seemed to be appealing to some Americans, but never became a major political option for workers. By the 1900s, only 4% of all workers were unionized. You're going to see the same type of socialism being fought um, and, or discussed in other foreign nations at the same time, uh, thinking about places like Russia and Germany, what was going to be successful and what would actually work. So as we go into our last section, I want to talk about this last essential question, which was how did workers and the United States government respond to the rapid changes, again, of industrial relation during the Gilded Age? This theme is theme three, image A. Theme three, image B. Theme C, uh, theme three, image C. Theme three is all about strikes and labor unrest. One of the tastic, tactics that was used by unions to gain better pay was to strike. And what that was was the strikers were designed to stop production in order to gain pay. Business leaders would resist strikers by hiring replacement workers or private polices to, to police systems to break up strikes. In some cases, violence is going to break out, and it's going to be part of this battle. At first, people are of the public opinion is for unions because the people are all the, the average people. Later on, we're going to see a, a change and a shift from pro-union to anti-union. Uh, the first one, during the Chicago Haymaker Strike of 1886, unionists demanded an eight-hour day. When violence broke out, the public opinion turned against unions. They viewed them as violent and un-American. Violence also is going to erupt during the Homestead Strike, which we're going to watch a little bit of a documentary about in 1892 at one of Carnegie's still plants. Andrew Carnegie, again, the Pittsburgh guy we talked about before. Federal troops were called to reopen the place and replacement of workers. And in 1894, Eugene Debs led railroad workers on the national strike when the Pullman Palace Car Company cut wages by 50%. Again, some of the images that you're going to see. So uh, throughout this whole part, and I, just a little bit different, the Gilded Age is going to be a period of time where we have the creations of new inventions, the advancements of people's lives, but in the same sense, a fight back from the workers to figure out where do we fit in all of this and how do we make sure that our economy is strong, our businesses are strong, but me and you at home are taken care of. Um, and this is going to be a challenge for the American government to see which side they take and how they actually evolve or work with.